Okay, well, we're done with the painting process, as you can see. Now, I didn't show you the painting process, but this is how it went. What I do first is I prime with Krylon Gloss Black. Now, this stuff is good for plastic, and that's very important because you want a good base coat on all of your PVC boxes. It will also adhere to the wood very well. So, get a good black coat of the Krylon Gloss Black all over. If you want to hit it twice, go for it. Let that dry. This stuff dries in 15 minutes, but let it sit longer between coats. Once that is good and dry, it's now for the good stuff, and I use Rust-Oleum Oil Rub Bronze. You can't really see it in this video, but it really gives a good look. It's not just a jet black look. It has a little bit of metallic properties in it, so there's a little met metallic flake in it, and it's just that light touch different than a gloss black, and I think it really enhances it, gives it a more machine look. Now, of course, you want to tape over everything that you don't want painted, i.e. the mitt clippered minimatics and where your lights are going to be in reflectors. So I'll be peeling that in just a second. Uh, the last color paint that I use is Valspar or any metallic silver. I use this for little pieces such as this is the clip that holds the ribbon cable. The tip of the nozzle of the uh, neutron wand. Also, any little caps, such as this, that'll go right on here. Again, you let that dry. No reason to try to paint that while it's on there. If you could take it off, take it off and paint it separately. So, speaking of taking off, let's go ahead and take off the tape and see what we got underneath and see how our piece is fared. Looks good. Found another one of my little webs. All right, now for the other spots, I'm going to need to get in there with my X Acto knife because what I do to protect them, I take the piece of blue painter's tape, cover over the area, and, uh, and give a good impression where the circle is going to be, and cut it out with an X Acto knife, and then it falls into place. So let me just lay this down. So some room. Oh, also, good a little note. Do you ever want to display your proton pack and you're not, not hanging it up? Door stops work really good. You set them down and it keeps the curve. Alright. Looks like everything fared very well. Stand this up for you so you can see. And there it is. And of course, the bumper go right on the front, just like so. We're going to go over that assembly in just a little bit. That's a little bit entailed. And, but for now, let's test the lights, make sure everything's still working. And we got lights. So there you have it. There's the painting process for your unlicensed nuclear accelerator. And now it's just going to be putting on the final pieces and the decals and making it a little perk up with some color. And we are almost done. Okay, it's time to adorn or decorate your proton pack. And again, I guess I'm just the Bob Ross of proton pack building, but Whatever you want to come up with is completely up to you. Again, Proton Packs and all the Ghostbuster paraphernalia are home scratch built. They are, they're, they are yes, there are exact blueprints. If you want to follow the screen models, go for it. Have fun. Do what you want to do. But um, I'm in the inclination, it's like, hey, this stuff is homemade. So if things need to be tweaked, you know, parts can't be found, things need to be modified, that's where the new looks come into. And, or modified looks, I should say. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is attaching some of the classic pieces on there. I have my rainbow ribbon. I'm going to glue this onto this little clip. Now, this clip, 
Ha ha ha, it's called reusing. This clip was on my four Romex box. I, I uh, buzzed it off with my Dremel, made a contour cut, which is going to fit the curvature of the cyclotron motor. So I'm just going to use my epoxy glue, glue it to the back, let that dry, and then literally I'm just going to screw it right on to there, right through that hot glue layer. So let's do that. We're also going to use some tubing. Go get uh, some different colored air hose tubing. And that's what you're going to use to you know, connect from different parts of the section. Also, I have smaller wire cable tubing. And that's going to go on certain parts that are sticking out like so. So they just go on just like that. And they get zip tied on. So as you can see, like it starts to take shape very, very quickly, which is adding a few bits and bobbles. The bumper is going to go on. Now the bumper is going to be a couple different pieces. Now if you remember, it's kind of like a spring loaded or like a screw there. What I've got is literally a giant spring. This is about a one and a half inch diameter spring. Again, you pick this up in the hardware section of your local hardware store and what you're going to do is you're going to buzz off about an inch. I've already drilled or cut off a piece of dowel rod. This dowel rod fits right inside perfectly and what that does is when you screw it on it doesn't let the spring move around. It's going to keep it pretty solid. Then I'm going to sandwich it with these fender washers on either side and then all get screwed on together right down the center with this giant screw ending up inside your cake pan and if you remember we put a dowel rod inside of here that's going to grab the threads and pull it up really tight so and that's going to be almost strong enough to lift with that's how good that is so you have bits of wire I got decals to go on a little bit later on so let's just start putting some stuff together dip it into the glue center it Here's your bumper coil. Show you a close up of that. Again, that's cutting the Dremel, cutting the piece of wood, putting it in the spring, cutting the spring with the Dremel and sandwiching it between two fender washers. There you go, that's on. Now the way I'll attach it on the sides is I'm actually gonna drill and put in a little anchor and then a screw. So here, again, I'll bring that up to the camera. Going to drill into the side, into the wood, the three quarter inch plywood, insert this anchor. With that, I'm going to put in this little metal screw. And to keep it from going through the PVC, I actually have this very fancy kind of ring protector that's going to go in. It's going to stop the threads from going all the way in. And you only do a kind of a just a snug fit. Now, for placement of your ribbon cable, I literally do it on the 45 degree axis between you know the between the bottom right and the top left. So I line those up and then I have my nice flat screws and they get screwed right on in. Okay, that's done. That will get coiled up and get put into one of the Romex holes. Yep, that's good.
and we're done. Here is my final version of my Proton Pack. Everything is put together, all the bits and baubles, decals, everything has been done, all the ornaments. And once that's done, as you can see, it brings the whole look of the Proton Pack all together. Uh, again, anytime I have hoses, I use little zip ties holding them down. I've got my rainbow ribbon. They just go into one of the Romex boxes. Same thing with this useless tube going here. It goes straight into a Romex box. Uh, the bumper's on, securely on. And of course, finally, the Alice Pack has been applied. Spin it around so you can see the Alice Pack. The Alice Pack has got four bolts in it. Two are carriage bolts that go all the way through and I use a washer and a stop hex nut on this end. I cover it, which is easier to see on this side, I cover it with a one of my extra caps from a five hour energy bottle. I spray paint it the same color, the oil rub bronze, and I just glue it on with hot glue. The bottom bolts are actually, they're, hmm, they're like a carriage bolt, but it's like a giant drywall screw. It's got a hex bottom, but it comes to a point. So what I do is I drill a little hole and I let that work its way in because it doesn't go all the way through. I have nowhere to mount it. So that's what good of using the wood back for. Literally, I screw it straight into the wood back. These go all the way through. Now, the top of the Alice pack typically does not have holes in this upper brace. You have to drill those. You can do it with a one quarter inch drill bit. It goes right through it. And so once all the decals are put on, Neutrino one is also attached. Got all of its parts going. And that's it. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to uh, pose those questions through the YouTube site. Uh, if I skip something, I'm sorry. It's hard to videotape every single process. As you can see, this can take you about a month to do. Give yourself the time. Do not rush it. Um, but have fun. Play with it experiment and the better you get at this the more you can do things like I added the lights my first one only had the reflectors and that's what a cheap proton pack is it's just the reflectors it is a static pack uh, no special effects so if you want to go that route if you're looking to make a cheap pack this is the way to do it you're going to spend some time but I think you'll be very happy with the results and I keep wearing mine in my Ghostbuster functions and everyone loves them uh, I have no complaints no one's going on, oh, that's not film accurate. No, it's like, oh, hey, nice pack. So, um, good group that I'm with. So, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope I covered all of it as best I could. Um, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to pop a question to me through my YouTube page. All right, thanks a lot, and keep busting. And remember, no job is too big, no fee is too big.